Hello and welcome to the next lesson in this free Windows Deployment Services training course for Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2. So far in this training series, I have demonstrated how to create a basic Windows Deployment Services infrastructure. First, I demonstrated how to install the Windows Deployment Services role onto a Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 server. Next, I showed you how to configure the WDS server and how to create the image store. I then demonstrated how to add a boot image and an install image by exporting the boot.wim and the install.wim files from my Windows 8.1 Pro DVD and importing them onto the WDS server. If you recall from the last couple of lessons from this training series, I used the boot and install images I added to perform a clean installation of Windows 8.1 Pro onto a bare metal computer on my network. The end result is exactly the same as installing Windows 8.1 directly from the Windows DVD. The only difference is that we have done it over the network instead. Although I demonstrated this using Windows 8.1, the procedure is exactly the same if you wanted to perform clean installations of Windows 8, Windows 7, and even Windows Vista. Whilst there is nothing wrong with performing clean installations of operating systems using Windows Deployment Services, there is one significant drawback. And that is, once the installation of Windows is complete, an administrator is still required to visit the client's computer to manually install all of the Windows updates and software applications required by the end user. Whilst this is not too much of a problem if you are installing Windows onto just one or two computers, if you have, say, a thousand clients that require installations of Windows, you can easily see that this becomes unpractical. To fix this problem, Windows Deployment Services allows you to create capture images, also known as custom images, which is the focus of this lesson. In this lesson, I will explain what a capture image is and how you go about creating them using a reference computer. So let's get started. The first question you probably have is, what is a capture image? A capture image or custom image if you prefer, is essentially an image which has been built and customised exactly the way you want it. For example, you can create a capture image that includes, say, Windows 8.1 Pro and the latest Windows updates, as well as installations of software that is important to your business, such as Microsoft Office and antivirus software. Once the capture image has been created, you can store it on the WDS server and then deploy it to bare metal computers on your network. When you deploy a capture image to bare metal computers, not only is the operating system installed, but also all of the applications required by the user, saving the administrator the task of having to visit every client's computer and install them manually. So now that we know what a capture image is, the next question is how exactly do we create the capture image? To create a capture image, the first thing you require is a spare client computer, which will be referred to as the reference computer. It is on this reference computer that we will build our capture image. That is, we will install the operating system we want and then customise it the way we'd like, including patching it with the latest Windows updates and installing any important software applications. Once we have created the perfect image, we will use a tool built into Windows called the System Preparation Tool, or SysPrep for short, to prepare the image for deployment. SysPrep removes all of the unique system-specific settings from the reference computer. This includes the security identifiers, or SIDs for short. SIDs are unique IDs which are used by the computer to identify user accounts as well as other computers. 
Whilst human beings use usernames and host names to identify user accounts and computers, the computer itself uses the SIDs. If multiple computers on the same network have the same SIDs, they will appear to have the same user accounts, which is a very bad practice and can cause problems, which is why they are removed. Other identifiers removed from the reference computer are the unique hardware IDs. Every piece of hardware installed in the reference computer, such as the graphics card, network adapter, motherboard, so on and so forth, has its own unique hardware ID. These hardware IDs are used to identify the hardware device as well as its manufacturer. Removing the hardware IDs from the reference computer allows the image to be installed onto other computers even if those computers have completely different hardware. SysPrep also removes the computer name and the domain membership from the reference computer. This is done to ensure that two or more computers on the same network do not share the same name, which, of course, is not supported by systems such as Active Directory, and hence they are removed. Lastly, SysPrep will clear all of the event logs and will remove all of the system restore points from the reference computer. After running SysPrep, the reference computer is shut down and returned to a configuration known as the out-of-the-box state. When a computer is placed into the out-of-the-box state, it is essentially returned to the way it was when it was first taken out of the packaging. If you have ever purchased a computer in a shop, when you boot it up for the first time, you may have noticed that you are required to configure the initial Windows welcome settings such as creating a user account, setting the date and time, choosing a time zone, and agreeing to the Microsoft Terms and Conditions. This is the out-of-the-box state. Once the capture image has been deployed to bare metal computers on the network, every one of those computers will boot into the out-of-the-box state with the initial Windows welcome questions. Once we have finished building our reference computer and have run the SysPrep tool, the final step of the process is to transfer our customised image from the reference computer to the WDS server. To do this, we have to create a special bootable environment on our WDS server using the boot image we added earlier in the course. Once we have created this special boot image, we are able to pixie boot our reference computer to the boot image, follow the on-screen instructions, and transfer our customised image from the reference computer to the WDS server over the network. Once the customised image has been transferred to the WDS server, it can then be deployed to other bare metal computers on the network. Since this lesson only demonstrates how to create the reference computer, and how to use SysPrep, I will show you how to create the special boot image and how to transfer our customised image in our next lesson. Now that all of the theory is covered, I will now change over to my reference computer to demonstrate how to create a capture image and how to prepare it for deployment using SysPrep. This is a clean installation of Windows 8.1 Pro that I performed onto a client's computer on my network using my Windows 8.1 Pro DVD. This is the computer that will become my reference computer. As you can see, the installation has only just completed, and I am being presented with the personalised screen. From here, I am asked to choose a colour scheme and a name for this computer. This is part of the out-of-the-box experience that I mentioned earlier, and are the first of the initial Windows Welcome questions. However, I will choose not to answer any of these questions, and will instead press and hold the Control, Shift, and F3 keys on my keyboard. As you can see, this has caused my reference computer to reboot. However, Notice that when the computer boots back up, 
it will log me straight into Windows as the local administrator. This is known as booting the computer into audit mode. Audit mode is a way of accessing the Windows desktop more quickly without having to run through the initial Windows welcome questions and having to go to the trouble of creating a user account. Notice that when I log into Windows in audit mode, the sysprep tool I mentioned earlier has launched automatically. For now, I will simply close the tool. I am now able to configure my reference computer the way I like and create the perfect image ideal for the computers on my network. I have now finished configuring my reference computer. To keep things short and simple, all I have done is install a copy of Microsoft Office 2013. To prove this, I will open Charms from the top right corner and select Search and enter 2013 as my search criteria. As you can see, various Microsoft Office applications have appeared, including Excel 2013, OneNote 2013, PowerPoint 2013, and Word 2013. Of course, if this were a live environment, I will also have installed the latest Windows updates and any other necessary software. Now that I have finished configuring my reference computer, I need to launch the sysprep tool to prepare the image for capture. You can use the sysprep tool in two ways, either from the command prompt or from File Explorer. To use sysprep from the command prompt, first, open a command prompt with administrative privileges. First, I will change the focus of the command prompt to the appropriate directory, which is c colon backslash windows backslash system32 backslash sysprep. When I press the enter key, Notice that the command prompt is now prefixed with the appropriate directory. From here, I will issue the command sysprep. I will then add the OOBE switch, which stands for Out of Box Experience. This instructs sysprep to return the reference computer to its original out of the box experience when it next boots up. Next, I will add the Generalize switch. It is this switch that instructs sysprep to strip out all of the settings unique to this computer, such as the security identifiers, hardware IDs, computer name, and domain membership. The last switch I will add is the shutdown switch. As the name suggests, this will instruct sysprep to shut the reference computer down once the process is complete. At this point, if I were to press enter, the command will run. However, I will instead close the command prompt so that I can show you how to run sysprep from File Explorer. If I open File Explorer, navigate to the C drive, and then open the Windows folder, followed by the System32 folder, and finally by the sysprep folder, notice that we have an executable for the sysprep tool. If I open the sysprep tool, this will launch the familiar looking sysprep GUI application that we saw earlier. The first options I have are the system cleanup actions. Notice from the drop down list, I can select either enter system out of box experience or enter system audit mode. From here, I will select the Enter System Out of Box Experience option. Beneath this, notice that we have an option to generalize the image. To do this, simply tick the checkbox. The last options we have are the shutdown options, which will determine what happens to the reference computer once sysprep has run. From the drop down list, we have the option to quit reboot, or shut down. Quit will simply close the sysprep tool. Reboot will reboot the reference computer. And shut down will turn off the reference computer.
Personally, I like to shut the reference computer down entirely, so I will select the shutdown option. When you are ready to begin, click the OK button. Sysprep will start to prepare the image. Depending on the speed of your reference computer, this can take a number of minutes to complete. Once Sysprep has finished, the reference computer will shut down. This concludes this lesson on how to create a customised image using a reference computer. I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson and found it informative. Now that we have created the perfect image on our reference computer and have run the SysPrep tool to strip out all of the unique system settings, in the next lesson I will demonstrate how to import the image over the network onto our WDS server. If you'd like to see more Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 training videos, please feel free to browse our YouTube channel. And don't forget to support our lessons by liking our videos and by subscribing to our channel. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next lesson.